Welcome to the channel. This video is about your recent oil mail in 2023. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk to two of my friends. They were looked at three times. Finally, they got the most qualified in last week's Sergeant First Class Evaluation Board. They got MQ took them three tries and I didn't want to just talk to people that gotten the MQ for their first look anyway I just don't want to talk about the first look because on the first look you're very competitive I really want to dive deeper on those guys that didn't get MQ on their first look and what they've done to overcome their situation I want to know their story on their first look their second look how they felt about it and finally now getting most qualified with an OML that would get them promoted as soon as March 1st. Ladies and gentlemen, I got Steven in the house. He, he's a big uh, Bears fan, so pardon him. And <laughs> the cardigan guy always wears a cardigan. I would, better. this occasion. <laughs> you got one Morales. All right, let's get this show on the road. The reason why I want to specifically interview both of you because you got looked at three times. Yeah. And then finally, in the third look, those two, you two got MQ. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, let's start with you, Juan, because you look ready, man. You look, you look ready. Where's the cigar at? I don't have any cigars, man. <laughs> He's got a pipe. Yeah, so introduce yourself, uh, your current position right now, and your last three assignments, how many years you've been in the Army, and uh, how many times you've been looked at. How about that? Okay, my name is Juan Morales. I'm an Ops and CEO in uh, Chicago Recruiting Battalion. Uh, previous assignments, I worked at the training at G3, uh, and then Station Commander two times before that. All right, appreciate you. G3, huh? So you were in Knox. I was. Okay. Steven? Hey, uh, Steve Dudek here. Um, right now, I'm the Chicago Battalion Waivers Analyst. Uh, I was training for like a year, maybe, uh, and then I was station commander twice before that. Okay, two years station command, uh, two times. How many? How many? How many months of station commander time you have? Oh, just over five years. Golly, just over five years. Yeah, Juan, how many time? How many years or how many months of station? Commander? Same. Yeah. So on average, between the two, you about a decade total of station commander time, five years piece. Okay. All right. And both of you are in op operations NCO. Both have been training, except for you, uh, Juan, you're, you were a training in G3. And Steven, you were a training in a battalion level. Let's start with the very first look. On your yeah. very first look, what was the emotions going through your head? Were you expecting to get a low OML? Like, you know what? Because most of the time, your first look is your most competitive. And that's, you know, that's normally what it is. And the, the second look, the third look, the third look, really, more than likely, you're not going to get picked up. And that's why this is so interesting to me. Walk me through and start with one on the first look. So my first look is when we first went into the OMLs, uh, where they uh, went away with the sequence numbers and all that. So I really didn't know what to expect. I don't think anyone knew what to expect because it's, uh, you know, that go into your army act and all that which clearly i didn't use before the, the omls you know were published right but i really didn't know what to expect honestly i was just didn't know okay and when you got your oml on your first look what was it and how did you feel when you saw your oml so my first oml number the first time around was 200 and i felt it was a competitive number, but I knew it wasn't good enough to to get promoted. Right, so, and this is out of I think give or take every year is about anywhere from thirteen hundred to seventeen hundred. Right, I think it was twelve hundred the first year. Okay, I remember. All right, how about you, Stephen? Uh, well, the first one, I didn't really know what to expect because it was new. I didn't think so. 408, 404, 408 is what I had. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I was mad, kind of, but I also, I understood because I didn't have any MQs. 
I had really good senior Raider write-ups, right? Um, but I didn't actually have any MQs. So that's really good though that you said that because you said, okay, you were mad, but you kind of expected it. When somebody gets a 700, 800, 900, or so on and so forth, they kind of knew, they kind of expected that, you know what I mean? Like, you know you're not competitive. But in your situation, you kind of, you were disappointed in a way, but you were also expecting it because you knew you weren't competitive based on the evals you've gotten that year, correct? Yeah, but but I think I was a little more relieved too because the people on the board, I feel that they actually read my NCOERs mm. because the NCOERs are really good. They just didn't look at the block and just didn't look at the just the senior rater. I feel that they actually took the time and read my read my stuff rather than just you know an HQ, right? So right. on your first look, I'm wondering what was your current position for both of you in, in your first look? I was a trainer. My first look. Okay. Steven? I think I just signed into Chicago. So I had just gotten out of the station in PCS. Yeah, it came out like two weeks after I got to Chicago. Let's move on to the second look, which was last year. What was your OML and what were the emotions that were going through your head when you finally got your OML number? So my second look, I was uh, 173. So from there, you know, my emotion was, well, I did better but still wasn't good enough. But now I, I, I thought of it as, okay, now the litmus test has been done. So I could compare myself to the people who I know who are in those high numbers or low numbers, however you want to call it, or who are MQ for me to compare and contrast against them and see, okay, what is it that they have that I don't have so I can make adjustments so I can get that type of number. And that's what I, that's what I based it off of for my third look. Were you pissed off or a little bit disappointed when you got your second look and you were at 200s? You know, I'm not going to lie. You, and I think this happens to everybody. You look at somebody who gets an MQ and you'll be like, well, how the hell did that guy get an MQ? He doesn't do nothing, right? I mean, it's it's a natural human emotion. So mm -hmm. um, I wasn't uh, uh, really upset because my number got better. I guess if I would have gotten worse, then I would have, yeah, I would have, I would have been upset over it. Man, listening to you, I, I feel like I have to kind of, you know, shut everything down because <laughs> you sound so sophisticated right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little more. <laughs> wow. he, Sorry. he has that stance like Captain Morgan. I'm, I'm in awe right now. He's like, the, what's it, the most interesting <laughs> world? Oseki's guy? You're like, you know, this is how I speak every day. So Yeah, you Stop. know, it's just the way you sit down, you're like... Way you're sitting yeah the way you're sitting tilted a little bit i'm on my couch <laughs> <laughs> okay that's good stuff man it's, it's nice to have fun steven how about you man your second like you were you de devastated uh no i wasn't devastated because i i jumped up uh about 200 it was like right at give or take 220 i think was my number the next year but again just like juan said like we compared ourselves I started comparing myself after the first one because I knew a buddy that was an MQ. The only difference between the two of us was he had two years training time and an, and an one MQ NCOER. I was like, "That's the difference between one and you know top you know top fifty and four hundred eight. Okay, right. And I just on getting a, an MQ NCOER, which I did, and I jumped up, and then I was like, "Okay, all right, let's do it again." Okay, like just focus on that. So. So basically, in the last two looks, you know, you're looking at people around you who got better at old male. It's like, okay, what ha what has he done that I haven't? Okay, but in in a way, but for you though, you weren't disappointed. You you kind of felt happy because you jumped two hundred spots from four something to two something, right? Uh, correct. All right. Uh, yeah. And then Juan, you were from like twenty seven spots. So the next thing is getting your OML last year and yesterday the uh mq list came out i mean two days ago and then yesterday your oml came out and you finally got your number solidified and how how, how did that feel though i mean so good i mean i won't lie <laughs> happy you know it's like finally you know uh i didn't do all of this just you know 
just to get a number 300 to move up an additional. What's your OML now? I'm number 30. OML. 30. Okay. Steven? Uh, 24. 24. How did you feel? All right. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> Y'all so boring. All right. I'm all happy. That's it. I don't know. You, you just, I had a feeling that what I was doing was going to work. So right. I, I didn't think, did I think MQ? Yeah. I did think I'd be MQ, but I didn't think 24. You know what I mean? Like I was like, oh man, that's all right. <laughs> we all know who's number one. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't mention his name, but he also came from Chicago Battalion. So I'm telling you, our battalion right now is a breeding grounds for first sergeants. And then we have, what, first sergeant day. He's number 17. And we got Noe Tapia, which is number two all in Chicago recruiting battalion, which, which is good. What do you think factored heavily on the big jump? My NCOER. Let's see here. The difference between last, you know, last year's, I just had GCOC. There wasn't really... Um, you know, no, it wasn't really schools. It was just stuff I did like around like the battalion to out, right? So, um, this year probably doing the waivers helped, right? So, yeah, doing the waivers. Then I had the recruiting company commander first on course, and then my master's the last two years that I'm almost done with, right? So, um, all that stuff just to beef up my, my NCOERs was pretty much it because I always write a letter to the president of the board. I, as long as I have that, you know, corresponding documentation as to why I'm doing it, right? It gives them a chance to take a look at that NCOER just a little bit more and uh, just to kind of separate me from, from somebody else. So, Okay, so on that NCOER, how many NCOERs have you had written from the last evaluation board to this year? So there's only been one. One. So. Like, yeah, I've only had one in between, like, each one. It actually kind of lined up, no change of raters or anything like that, so. On that last NCR, since you talked about different aspects of the NCR, that NCR got you an MQ, correct? Correct. Were you enumerated on that NCR on a senior rater? No, uh, it would have been either one or two. I, because I would have gotten that in June, I, f I forget, but we were number one and two, I know that, just, just based on the conversation during our counseling, so. I don't know which one who had one or two, so. You didn't see your NCOER? I mean, I didn't look at it. Dude, there's a lot of action going on. Right, right, right. right. A lot of questions at me, okay? So, <laughs> I have to get off my back there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, one. how about you? How many NCORs have you had from the last look to this look, and what are those key things in your NCOER that you think had factored into you getting a low OML this year? So, I had two NCORs. Uh, one obviously was my uh, my annual, and then um, I had the opportunity to uh, go run a company because one of the first arms left for for about six, however many months. I think it was six months. It was like six months or yeah. so before the new one came. So CSN gave me the opportunity. Said, "Hey, here's your chance." So I took the opportunity to go uh, run the company, and then I got uh, rated as a first first sergeant. So. I think for me, that was the difference maker is actually being in a seat and getting rated as a first sergeant when you're technically not a first sergeant yet. During that time, that six months rated period as a first sergeant, what was the key bullets on that NCOER that you can think of? Oof. I was enumerated very well. Um, Were you one, number one? No. Why not? I, I, you know what? There's just one guy that was better than me. Yeah. Who's that guy? It might have been you. Even when you feel you see what you can still right now? I know what he's doing. When he just set slow, you up. You can still go. Might have been him. Even when uh, yeah. No so, hope, you can um, still go. I never I was enumerated. No, man, I still go. Um, so, I, I did very well on the enumeration. So, I think that's what helped out. I already have a degree. I'm working on a master's. Uh, I kind of laid back a little bit on it because, you know, who, who likes going to school? But, right. but that's me. Um, I didn't do any additional schooling or anything like that. I just did, did my job and that's it. Okay. So basically for you, you took a hard assignment, an assignment yeah. above your pay grade. Correct. So you had two MQs back to back from the last board, uh, one as a tr as an operations NTO and then one as a first arm enumerated well, right? Okay. And then going back to Steven, he had one NTOER 
but he also had an MQ and he enumerated one or two, give or take. Basically top 5%. What do you want to do next? Because right now, hey, clock's ticking. I don't know if you can hold on to you guys because you're going to have to wear the diamond. Let's go. I guess I'll go first. You know, I, I, I won't lie. I like it here. I'd like to stay here, but I know how the army works in mysterious ways and there's always... You got to give a better answer than that, bro. That's as politically correct answer or not so correct, you're saying you, you just want to stay here i'd like to stay here but hey i don't control my destiny all right and do you want to be a first arm or do you want to be a senior master trainer you want to i don't know i'd love to be a first arm. okay i enjoyed it I so really basically what you're saying is you want to be a first arm in chicago battalion yeah, that's what i'm saying what's up was that easier hey i'm just saying that there's sometimes like uh you know how it works you all know how it works no, not really. Okay. Well. All right. Hey, Steven, close us out. KC Recruiting Battalion, any position available? Any first arm position, right? Hey, I'll take anything. I want the Midwest. No one likes to come out here in the Midwest. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, I appreciate the time. All right. I love you guys. Uh, have a good weekend. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. That's it for today's video. Hopefully you picked up something on it. My name is Bombo. Go crazy in the like button because I know you like this video because obviously when the OML just came out, you probably were looking at it and thinking, what can I do to improve next year? Consider subscribing to the channel if you like the video content that I just done and I'll catch you on the next video.